Hello, internet friends. This week, we are doing something a little different. I really wanted to challenge myself because, I don't know, I'm just having a lot of fun with challenges lately. I did a how to identify quality clothing video, and now I wanna challenge myself to actually find quality clothing at the thrift store. Now, I do honestly feel like I am a little bit at an advantage with this video because I am not only thrifting for myself, but I'm also thrifting for my business. But first, before we get started, I do want to go over a little bit of like a like a basic refresher course on quality clothing and what exactly I'm looking for. <laughs> Now, I kind of see quality clothing, take a drink every single time I say quality clothing, I kind of see quality clothing as like a little bit of a personal preference kind of thing. Most of my advice on quality clothing has come from the internet. Reddit is a great source. Uh, just searching how to find quality clothing, another great source. But I do feel like there's a pretty solid list that you can reference when you're out in the trenches and you're actually looking for quality clothing. Okay, the most important one is seams. There's a lot that can go wrong with seams. They can be unfinished, they can be raw. Fabric is super important. I talked about this in the last video that I referenced quality clothing, but I would always say look for natural fibers. However, synthetic isn't your worst enemy. It's okay to have mixed fiber content. So for instance, if you find something that is cotton and polyester blend, a lot of times it's put in there to reinforce the fabric. So for instance, the sweater that I'm wearing is 100% cotton on the body itself, but the ribbing on the sleeves is cotton polyester blend. And that's actually meant to keep the integrity and uh, stretch to the fabric. Next one, this is also debatable and kind of hard to find, but prints matching up. Now, I don't think this is the end all be all of good quality. And that's because a lot of times with prints matching up, that means that you have to use more fabric. So the sustainability factor kind of takes away from the quality factor. But it's also important to look at how the item was actually made. For instance, you can find dresses that like the prints are just completely mismatched and you just know that was like sloppy manufacturing overall. Those are the basics that we're looking for. Like I said, it's not the end all be all of what I can pick up while thrifting, but it's definitely a good solid guide that I can go on to look for quality clothing. Okay, you guys, without further ado, let's go thrifting. Okay, I have made it to Savers on this extremely gloomy day. Look at how gloomy that is. And we're gonna get we're gonna get our quality thrift on. Goal for today, quality. Quality, quality, quality. Let's do this. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, you guys. This challenge was a lot more difficult than I anticipated. This ended up spanning over multiple days, multiple different thrift stores, in order for me to get like a good solid chunk of clothing to show you guys. However, that doesn't mean that some items did not truly surprise me. And even though I caught them on film, I did end up passing on some pieces. One thing that I quickly started to notice, mall brands are actually your best friend when it comes to quality clothing. Kind of shocking. I honestly didn't anticipate that. I don't really take a look at brands like Banana Republic and J. Crew very often, uh, just because I am a reseller and they don't sell the best for me. But I was honestly quite pleasantly surprised at some of these pieces. Now, of course I had to grab some repeat offenders of just absolutely horrendous clothing. No, I did not pick them up. I did leave them behind at the thrift store just because I know, you know, someone's probably looking for something trendy and quick and hopefully they'll buy it secondhand and not brand new because <sighs> we have to stop supporting these companies, you guys. The quality standards are atrocious. We're talking brands like Shein, we're talking brands like Pretty Little Things, Fashion Nova. Quality standards are just not there at all. The seams are terrible, they are completely sheer, and it's unfortunate because all these brands are online brands. So nobody can actually see on the models that this clothing is just completely see-through. <laughs> I'm not putting my nose up at shopping online. However, I am saying if you see a 100% polyester dress, run for the hills. It's not going to be a good one. Don't do it. Just don't, don't do it. <laughs> okay. And last but not least, I think this piece just goes to show not everything is made equal. This is the brand H&M, which what? What? Come on now. We classify that as fast fashion around here. However, the closer you inspect that bad boy, you're like, oh wow, this is quality clothing. So I'm not going to say every brand out there is a repeat offender. What I am going to say is I think it's just important to know what to look for. And this is a perfect example of knowing quality clothing the moment you touch it. Okay. Now let's go ahead and talk about everything that I picked up. Uh, like I said, I really feel like I cheated on this one just because I am a reseller. So most of this stuff 
I bought with the intention of reselling. I found, I don't think anything for myself, which is okay. I mean, that's okay. I don't need new clothing. Okay, to start off, we got this wool houndstooth J. Crew number. Now, the reason I got the most excited over this one is because this was the only item that I could find that had matching aligning fabric. And that's the little pocket cover rectangle bad boy right there. That is quality. It matches up, it perfectly aligns. It's just the masterpiece, the construction, she is the moment, okay? No, but in all seriousness, this covers everything. Like you got good stitching, you got quality inside lining, you got fabric seams matching up. This really renews my faith in this brand just because it is a mall brand and instantly you kind of think mall brand is like mid-tier. But to me, when I see the craftsmanship on this and I compare it to other brands that I come across, I'm like, oh no, this is, this is top tier. This is good quality clothing. This is gonna last you a lifetime. Now, this one is another mall brand. And I feel like this is a good example of not everything is made equal. And that's free people. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like free people does a hit and then it can also do a miss. This one was definitely a hit. Now, it doesn't fit all the check marks just because some of the quality is missing. You have some unfinished seams, you know, the, the stitching isn't really the best quality. It's nothing to write home about. But I do think for the fabric content and the fact that this has lining built in and it's also sewn on the bias of the dress, I think that really goes to show that there was some intention put into this dress. Okay, next up, now this is one of my favorite brands to find. There's been a lot of discourse around it as far as whether it's still a good brand, isn't relevant anymore, I don't know. In my eyes, this brand will never go out of fashion, okay? And that is Eileen Fisher. Now here's why I think this brand should not ever go out of fashion. I don't wanna mess this up because I think this is so important to the brand. Who owns Eileen Fisher? Fisher personally owns 60% of the company that shares her name, while the remaining 40% is held by her 1,200 full and part-time employees through an employee stock ownership plan. I don't know, man. When I think of quality standard and I think of just overall, like, a good company that I want to support and get behind, Eileen Fisher's definitely top of mind. But as far as quality clothing goes, I mean, you got sturdy, heavy metal hardware, you got good craftsmanship, you got finished seams, reinforced stitching. I don't know, man, that's a brand I can get behind. I fully support Eileen Fisher. I have a couple pieces of hers in my own personal collection wardrobe. Okay, so when I say this is a small haul because it was that difficult, I mean this is a small haul because it was that difficult. I only got two pieces left, which is wild to me. The next piece, <laughs> this one, I like, legit had to talk myself into this. I was like, do I really need to do this? I don't know if it's even gonna sell. I don't think it's gonna sell, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Fresh produce. That's right, I bought fresh produce with intentions of selling it, but here's why. It honestly, out of all the garments that I could find, it fit the quality standard the most. It's got yoking on the back, which is something that everybody suggests looking for when it comes to button down shirts. You want a yoke that's gonna reinforce the design of the shirt, it's gonna hold it up, it's gonna create integrity, all those things, okay? I suck at defining a yoke, but like, that's that's basically what it is. It's just this, this backing piece right there. It's cotton linen blend, and let me tell you, this is like a sturdy cotton linen blend. Like, the weave on it is really good. I'm very impressed. But the last thing, oh my goodness, this like, blew my mind. I could not believe this. The stitching on this, the craftsmanship, the finish. You guys, it is beautiful. It is a work of art. Dare I say it even beats Eileen Fisher. That is some quality craftsmanship and it's fresh produce. Here's the thing with fresh produce. So they filed bankruptcy, uh, I believe in 2020 or 2021, just recently. Shut down all their stores. They went bankrupt. They were bought by another company and I'm hoping that they keep their quality because my goodness, my goodness, that is some quality clothing. Very last piece that just kind of checked off the very last check mark that I was looking for uh, when it comes to quality clothes. This is Mari Mecco number. Uh, I was so stoked to find Mari Mecco. This is the second time in my career that I found it. Now again, this doesn't fit all the pieces. This does not 
check off quality in every way, shape, or form. But the one thing that this really sold me on, I mean, honestly, I would have picked up Mari Mecco anyways, just because, uh, what? It's Mari Mecco? Like, you can't pass that up. But the tag was where it was at. So it tells you how to clean it. It's got, you know, 100% cotton, but it also says shrinkage, max 3%, machine wash hot, do not bleach, do not tumble dry, hot iron. There's a lot on that tag. That's a lot of information and not every brand is willing to do that. Most brands are either just gonna slap dry clean only on the back of it to make things easy. Okay, you guys, let's talk about the quality of these clothes and just some final thoughts because, oh boy, do I have some final thoughts. Now, if you saw my last video, you might know that I got pretty upset when I was researching quality clothes and just you know the definition of quality clothes what to look for yada 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 one thing that I did notice was the more I went into the men's section the more quality clothing I could find here's the other thing that I noticed I really started to take note of the fact that most of the quality clothing ended up being more mature labels so I would classify Eileen Fisher and Fresh Produce both as like mature labels you know a 20 something probably isn't gonna walk into Fresh Produce and purchase that brand. I'm not saying it's never happened, but I'm just saying, like that's not their target audience. There's for sure an obvious tier list when it comes to quality. Like younger audiences, getting that really crappy quality. Kind of mid-level, it's like, we're dipping our feet in, and I say we, cause I'm in my thirties, like dipping our feet in, we're starting to understand things a little bit more, we're starting to progress, we're putting our hands up and saying, no, no, I'm not gonna accept your <laughs> clothing anymore, okay? I want something that's a little bit better standards. And then the more mature we get, the more we're like, okay, that's it, I'm only buying quality. I'm not putting my money anywhere else, cause you know what, it's my money and I'm gonna hold on to it if I have to. I definitely don't wanna end up getting too preachy and on a soapbox just because I know that can very easily shut a person down. It starts to make you feel helpless. It starts to make you feel like you can't, there's only so much you can do and trust me, I definitely feel that way. I feel helpless when it comes to fast fashion and you know, how much of it's being produced and just how terrible the quality is. I mean, really the only thing I can do is one, not buy it and two, at least try and educate someone on it and tell people what to look for. Okay, so that is the end of my TED talk. I'm done ranting. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really wish I had picked up more, but that was the best I could do. It's not terrible. It's just not great. I also just wanted to say that just because I don't show everything that I picked up this week doesn't mean that like I picked up just absolutely crap quality clothes. It's more so that a lot of these items fit one criteria but not the others. And I think that just goes to show that like most stuff is just how it feels on your body. Also, yes, with this haircut, I literally look like there's something about Mary the moment I pull it back. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I am definitely gonna leave all of the references that I collected for what I looked for in quality clothing down below. So if you wanna do your own research, sometimes this type of information just goes in one ear and out the other. And sometimes it's just nice to have a little guide to refer to. Definitely recommend checking those links out down below. Thank you so much for watching. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.